Welcome, I'm Penn. In this month's tutorial, we're gonna be animating this cool looking boss dude. First of all, after you design your character, make sure you set up all your layers. Very important. After you have that all done, setting up your layers, let's start by creating our keyframes. And this will be the kind of like main attack he does, a couple slices. So let's go ahead and hit Alt N or right click the frame number one and hit new frame. So now we have two frames and I think the first swipe I'm thinking it's his back's gonna be turned to us and the sword's gonna be on the other side. So let's go ahead and right click cell properties and move that sword to negative five. So now it's behind everything and we'll do the same with the cape, but we'll make it positive five, potentially six, just to make sure it's above everything, which I believe it is. So now we have that all settled, we can place the sword in position. I'm gonna to use Shift H to flip it around and maybe Shift V to flip it upside down. And I'm gonna move it somewhere around here for now. And then the head itself, I'm gonna move down here. And I'm also gonna pick this dark color here and just cover up his eyes and the helmet. Maybe even up into here a bit. And I'll take this color here just to represent that it's the back of his head. So now we have the head in a position that it might be. And now we can go ahead, we're gonna move the arms to the side and let's focus on cape placement. Be somewhere around here and we'll chop off the bottom by selecting the M tool, the rectangle and then hit delete. And we'll make that better later, but the goal is to focus on the pose, the key pose. So let's grab this body here, which looks like nothing really, and just move it in position. And then same thing here, let's delete all that. And then grab this dark color and kind of just make sure we have some sort of visual of his leg. So if we perhaps have his knee coming out, maybe his crouch, his knees there, and delete some of this, we can turn off the cape and just focus on the body itself so we're not guessing. Go ahead and turn that all all black and the head as well this part here let's just make it more symmetry more pleasing to look at then we'll jump back to the body layer and we're just gonna fill in more here and this leg's gonna be straight something like this straight and extended and we'll fill this body up a bit more here maybe it comes up a bit more maybe we need thicker legs let's try it that might be too thick we need a couple more maybe this leg it's a bit more me we'll just mess around with poses and you don't want to worry about too much that's going to be behind the cloak it's going to happen so quick and you're not even going to see it so let's turn back on the cloak and the cloak really gives it a bit more of a dynamic pose so let's let's go ahead and call that a decent pose for now if it's something that kind of sticks in your mind later on you can always change it up maybe a couple more finishing touches to the foot here I don't mind that. So let's go ahead and make sure the arm. So this is the back arm, which was on his left side. So it's over here. And we can go ahead and pretty much just delete that and make sure you have the color. This is just gonna be something around here with the sword. This arm, we can delete that and keep the shoulder perhaps, the shoulder right there. And then take that color and kind of fill in over here. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's going to be happening so quick. Just make sure it's somewhat pleasing to look at. And makes enough sense. You could perhaps even tilt the sword a bit. Mess around with that. And with doing so, let's clean up these pixels that are happening. This one at the end. And that doesn't look bad. And now we have a key pose. So let's toggle between them. And not bad. And then let's do a third key pose. And this one will be coming from this second key pose and slam it down perhaps. So let's copy and paste that first frame because we know his head's gonna be looking towards us now. Perhaps down here, body as well. Maybe we can pick the body of this one. See if that makes any sense. We might be able to get away with it. And the sword will have basically on the ground. Let's move this arm over and we'll delete the bottom half over here. We're just going to make the arms up straight, right like this, right to the sword. We can move the cloak over, put it on the ground again, remove that extra, and then also work on the back arm, which is somewhere back there. So I'm just going to highlight it all, and there it is. And we can just put that one like this. And this keyframe is looking pretty good already. Trim this up a 
over here and not bad add a pixel right here too and one thing we on this keyframe we have this material here let's try to incorporate that into it and it's going to be oh, not on the cape on the body layer and just bring that over there and let's see how that looks oops turn off the front arm make sure good fill it in fill this bottom in turn on arm and let's just see it's smaller here so let's let's just clean it up a tad make it a tad smaller like so Put out frame one again and do the same thing with this kind of dark shade here but it does blend in with the arm so perhaps we will leave it just for the eye but now we can toggle through the three key frames and go from there so to recap what we've done in the video we just did the keyframes but before that we did the character design we split them up on one, two, three different, three, four, five, six different layers with the, the sword, arms, head, body, and cape. And then we tackled the keyframes. So the next step I like to do is start adding in-betweens. And that can be anticipation frames, follow through frames, or just right in between these two frames. But let's work from one to two. So we're gonna want some anticipation. Just a few frames to begin with. So perhaps he, he starts to move back the sword as he starts shifting his body weight. So let's just grab upper body, shift it back a bit. Maybe the head comes back as well. And with that, the arm. We're not gonna worry about the cape right now. That's secondary animation. It reacts to all the final animations. So let's just focus on the core of the body. Anticipation, he moves over. And perhaps we can do another frame where he starts to move over and down. Let's uh, highlight this whole section here and just move this one over and down. And again, we'll delete this over here. And then we'll fill in this dark color and then you can even add a couple pixels here and we can just cycle through make sure his sword is in the correct place each time and then jump back to that and fill it back up just see what's going on and that's all right maybe we'll do more dynamic kind of sword pose where he really starts bringing it in but for now we'll just keep it like that and see how it feels so let's jump to the fourth frame which is which was the second keyframe and let's do some follow throughs of this so we duplicated that frame and let's just move this down, perhaps his hands, everything goes down. Maybe this side stays up. Maybe his head tilts to that way. So I'm going to do the right kind of one here, tilt it in. And then this one tilt in as well. And this one here, make sure that's above it. So he's like looking, but I think we move, we may have moved it. So this one you can probably get away with doing one less. Let's check that out. Now it doesn't move. Maybe we did have it correct. Let's just see what the eye is doing. Yeah, that looks okay. Follow through. Perhaps all the cape goes down. I know I said I wasn't going to do that one, but let's just do a little bit of movement there. And the body itself comes down as well. We'll just move that and let's check it out. And it doesn't look like much so far, but we are slowly getting there, working our way to it. So we got our anticipations kind of slashes and let's do let's add VFX because that kind of helps bring, with bringing it all together and I think I want to do something not flamey but not so straight and let's move this behind everything for now so we can just draw freely perhaps it needs to be a bit bigger so the hitbox is a little bigger so let's delete this inside and that looks interesting which is the goal so let's keep it and let's do some add some highlights to it i'm gonna go to lock alpha so we can just draw within it and we'll just do some shapes try to make something look a little pleasing out of it and then we'll do a new frame and we'll delete this make sure onion skin's on and just get an idea of what it will turn into maybe they'll disappear quickly maybe these parts will just become its own thing smaller versions let's play around with that maybe there's one trickling over here and the goal here is just like to the outline of the original sprite just work with that and get something going then you can always add little specks in areas that have some space now let's make a new frame, do the same thing, lead it, and just do the same thing with these. But main thing is make them disappear quite quickly. And we're just doing lots of shapes and designs. It can be tedious, but the results are usually worth it. And we'll do one more. We'll delete all that. And then let's really start making them. Make sure they're flowing with the direction of the sword swing and really start making them. 
disappear, and soon we'll check out the end result of it. Maybe a couple more. They start to get quicker because you're only doing a couple pixels here and there. Start leaving the small ones out, like this guy, maybe even that guy, and one more. Just a couple on each side, this guy and this guy, and let's check it out. Now we have a little bit of anticipation and a swing with some follow through. Again, doesn't look like much, but we're getting there. Let's change the frame rate. Let's bring it down to 75. Got a little bit smoother and just quicker and not bad. So the cape itself, it's not gonna be, I don't think I'm gonna do flowingness the whole time. So the idle frames will actually just be kind of on the ground, just because if you're doing flowingness, everything else in the game needs to flow and this is part of my assets where nothing is flowing to say. Now we can kind of just slowly tweak this cloak and we might add an in-between between these just to really tie it all together. But for now let's just focus on the in-betweens of each of these. Maybe the first two key poses and let's bring some life to this cape just a little bit so we get a better idea. Maybe it comes more low and upwards to say, to start I mean, and a little bit like this, let's say comes down a little bit and it hits the ground there. This one really starts dropping. This side starts coming in a bit more. These ones kind of lose pixels like this guy as well. And we'll copy and paste this one since it's head of this. Down like this and this side one more. We'll do the same one. Same thing with this side and these kind of just drop. And now let's check it out. So now you kind of have not a too dramatic cape swing. Something looks off, but we'll clean that up in a sec. But it looks like something. And you can see the starting frames, I guess. Maybe I didn't start on this, the first one. Let's clean that up, because this one's lower. I don't want this one a little bit higher. Might have to move it all back a bit. Leave some frames here. Don't like this little guy. And then it starts to fall. So this one here, we can just delete for now. And we'll bring back this that new one that's not flowing in the wind. We'll just set it there for now. And we'll check out the animation. And it's looking a lot better with just the cape movement now. And we can add some more movement to the body itself. And before you know it, the two key first keyframes will be connected and looking somewhat decent. So let's do some work. So we have some sword movement, but perhaps we will continue to drop one more frame. And we have four frames of anticipation for, for the next attack. Maybe it starts to come in then, and then it comes, let's say it comes back up. So it went up there and then it's all the way here and then it starts to really come up and we'll clean up these arms in a sec. Let's just see where we're at. And I think that's a good position to really start bringing the third key pose into position. And it kind of looks like he does a little backswing. It's, it's kind of cool. And maybe we need to make this anticipation a bit more dynamic as well. So let's let's really bring that last kind of anticipation frame. Let's really move the arm a bit and see we're on the sword. And then you erase a couple pixels of the arm, kind of just get a better feel. And that looks already a little bit bigger or better. So he moves slowly, moves a bit more, and let's let's twist this sword. Oops. Make sure you're on the sword layer and twist the sword. We're gonna do that and make sure this doesn't have any wonky pixels. Let's check that out. And that's a quick slash. Say so if the hero gets close, just quick slash, and then we'll have him slam down. And it's looking pretty cool. Let's turn on the background, get a better view. Looks pretty cool. We can even add some kind of dust VFX, maybe some sparks. Be cool when the sword hits the ground at the end. And let's see what we do here. Oh, we started the VFX on the wrong frame. So let's go ahead and move all this back. Unless I copied a frame and didn't do anything, we'll know because it's recorded later on. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and make the anticipation for that last keyframe. Let's work on that. And then we'll start smoothing out things. So he swings, maybe his head comes down and his head comes up. Make sure you're grabbing the head. Maybe the head, where's that one where it's not twisted? Maybe it starts twisting back on this one. And then, okay, looks pretty good. Let's keep it twisted. Maybe we can even twist it a bit more in this way. Do this one coming in. It would just be like kind of moving it over. Maybe it's fine like that. And then slam down. And this head, I think, be further down. Maybe all of it one over. Cape kind of filling in this area up here. Oops, we're on the body. Make sure we're on the cape layer. And those follow throughs be okay, I think, as part of the body as well. Let's keep this plain. And then we're gonna need some 
anticipation for having some follow through frames. And we basically have the setup, we just need to do the last part of the attack which is coming down, but we can do the VFX there. Now let's go ahead and grab that same color and kind of do the same thing with the D tool or just the normal pencil and kind of make it. Might move this one ahead and we're gonna connect it there. Or no, it looks good behind his head right here because that makes sense, I believe. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing we did before, just create smaller versions of this kind of trail of fiery magic, whatever it is. You want to make that here, one here, a couple small ones perhaps, small one up there, a couple small ones here and there. And you can really see doing these VFX, they really kind of bring the animation together quickly. You can still see that the, the frame, I mean the sprite is pretty static, but you can tell that it's an attack. Oops. Make sure we have enough frames at the end. Alt N. And let's just focus on what we did in the first one. Start doing each frame and each little section one by one. Again, can be tedious, but end result is pretty cool. And on to the next frame. Same thing. And probably better if you work in the direction of the swing. So it's all kind of coming towards it. And we're slowly getting rid of them. Go here, one there, here, and maybe one. And now it's starting to carry a little bit of weight which is pretty cool. So now we kind of have a range of, we have 19 here. There'll probably be around 18, 19, 20, give or take. We can add some, take some out, but we have a good idea of how many frames this animation will be. So let's go ahead and add the kind of small, smaller details to this kind of follow through. So he comes in and he slams his head, maybe that, and then it kind of comes up perhaps. And then we want him to end in this kind of position here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of these and kind of put it here. Because he's going to slide back. Now we know this frame, it's do adding the in-betweens of connecting these. Just so it's super smooth. But now we know we can move this over here. We could even easier way would be to kind of just take these frames again. Copy them, paste them on frame 18. And kind of just move these as move the cape down or maybe the cape closer already body move it over one and perhaps this arm and you can see here in the preview it's already looking like it's connecting a lot better so now we just have to work on that a bit more so this frame 17 let's go kind of right in the middle this guy's one quick frame of just like really starting to move into position the cape can kind of come shorter We've got the leg in there as well. So let's turn off the cape for a quick sec. Just focus on the wool and the body, I guess. Body's up here. The underneath can look a little bit messy at times, but we will work our best to uh, clean that all up. Now the leg starts to move as well. Maybe it goes one pixel over and kind of top of it moves a bit. Move that arm in. And then let's add some more cape up here. Just Fill that in, and then his arm itself, let's move it a bit down, so it's holding the sword, so it's coming over here, lower it one over again, coming, and then in, into position, and not bad, then and save that, and let's just kind of just cycle through frames and kind of clean up while we look, just clean up, make sure you're on the right layer, so this is that hand, I fill in this. Start at the beginning. I'm going to turn off onion skin and keep the background on so we can really see pixels that stand out. And this kind of going down kind of is too much. So the second frame, I'm going to add one and then maybe that makes it feel a little better. This arm here, let's clean that up a bit. Make sure that kind of fits better. It looks odd. That looks all right. Frame four, you see a lot going on, but it looks okay. Looks okay. Okay. This pixel right here, front arm, let's get rid of that. Comes back up. And then uh, quite a few holes here. Let's clean that up. 10, that one there. This kind of arm doesn't really make sense. Let's go ahead and make it hold a bit more. Perhaps this color. Kind of mixing up the layers, but that's okay. And then it comes down. And we have a little hole here. We'll fill in. And it's still there. And it's still there. And this still needs a bit more love altogether with the follow through, the cape, and everything. But looks pretty cool. And then he starts going back into the original position. So now let's give some love to the cape, which will really start to bring all this together. So the first frame, let's turn everything off, onion skin, kind of get an idea of what we want. Maybe some kind of something like that. And then it 
kind of slowly fades. Maybe something, a little art kind of comes together and then it falls down. We'll try some things out, some quick sketches, and then it really starts to fall into position. And I'm just focusing on this left side here. Add some more so it can kind of settle into that last position. And then it starts moving. We kind of get frame above showing too much. So let's, and let's move some, add some more up here. Keep it a little consistent. And then he moves over and we can kind of shift these a bit. So it's like kind of settles in place quickly. And you can see the end there. I like that. It kind of settles quickly and it's looking fairly good. Let's continue working on the cape here. Maybe this part's a little too tall. Let's just clean it up a bit. And the back arm kind of in the way. That here. And then we'll kind of let's see where we're at. Still got a lot of cloak here. And it comes, starts falling down real quick. And maybe it settles a bit quicker than we original thought originally thought and it comes so not bad there's a couple there's one part that jumps up real quick so let's figure out that right here oh we'll clean that up and that looks a lot better for the cloak i see the inside of the second attack kind of just stays there so let's clean up that quick before we forget so it comes in let's say this is kind of our way starts to slowly come down comes down and then you can kind of just start adding like we did the last time add some more here and then he starts shifting that way and we can forget about it and the cape really adds a lot to the animation kind of gives it flow constantly and consistently and that's a really nice thing about cape animations or secondary animations they really give they really complement the main animation so there's still some stuff we can do so let's maybe add a glow to the sword i was thinking so let's let's say this is the first frame oh, we have a vfx there so let's delete that first frame of so the idol would be 8 10 12 frames before this and then this frame let's say this starts to glow so i'm going to hit Control u and or perhaps i think i tried something oops let's do try a neon glow strength three oops it's not what we wanted. Perhaps it might not work. I haven't messed around with that, but it looks like it could be cool. But I'm not sure how it works yet. That's quite a bit, so let's just delete that. And we'll do our own glow by Control U. I gotta mess around with that. That's an extension. Kinda was testing out. Let's add some light to it. So I'm gonna do 8 and then maybe do 6 on this one. And then we can do 24 on this one. And then here we'll do, we'll keep it 0 since it blends in with the flame a bit. And then say it dies down and then we'll do the same thing with the three frames in front so let's do 8 16 24 and then i think the end slash needs a bit more oomph to it just looking at this so let's let's make this perhaps a sword bounce or something so we're on the sword layer let's it bounces one more time let's say it settles down yeah that looks a lot better and perhaps we can add some oh do you know what we haven't added before we do this last thing, let's add this red to the, the effects because we didn't do that at all. We'll just make a small circle, alpha, and we'll say somewhere's right here, here as well. I'm coming in here, and then we can work backwards. This one had some, this one had some on the tail end of it. That one had a little bit. Maybe these ones are almost fully covered, and then they start dying out real quick, and we can just add a little bit more. And let's do the same thing here. Okay, there's some here. I'm going, up. I'm going up there. So three sections will do. This one will kind of separate into three areas. And that's looking pretty cool. There's one pixel in the cape I'm not a fan of. For some reason, this always sticks out to me. So I'm just going to fix it like that. See if we can find any more. I don't think so. I was wrong. But he's looking pretty cool. Go ahead and save that. One more thing I think I want to do is try some more VFX. And kind of do like sparks, maybe. Sparks. So let's do like an orange, orange, yellow. I'm gonna bring up this script called Color Shading. I'm using a lot of my videos. If you're curious about it? Just ask in my Discord. Lots of people know. Search Color Shading on a Sprite extension on Google. Let's see how this looks first of all with everything else. Not that great. Maybe we need more yellow. Wait, perhaps here. And when he slams the ground, just do this kind of spark hitting bounces and that looks pretty cool already we'll add some color once we add some more of these let's do one behind perhaps turn off background keep the vfx a little easier to get that arc and then we'll have it and that looks pretty cool 
is adding a little more. So let's do a little tiny one front, maybe? Like, and perhaps one more going the other way. Maybe on the second kind of bounce right here. A little tiny one happens. And that looks pretty cool. So let's add some kind of, or maybe bright brightness to it. So I'm going to grab the bright yellow and go lock alpha. Then I'm just going to highlight the front of these quickly. Front there, front there, that one, and that one, front on those. And maybe they, the last couple ones, they get darker. So let's do a dark kind of orange here. Go to do the trail end of these kind of orange. There, a couple there. So, and then say the orange starts overtaking, becomes orange. That one, go there. And it kind of looks like they're flickering, like into this hot, sparky look. Let's see what we can do with the EV effects, kind of mess around with it a little bit. I'm thinking duplicating it and adding some kind of... I'll try out a couple of these modes and just see what we can do. And it's good to have the background on as well. That one looks kind of cool, color dodge. Addition is pretty cool. And let's jump to the main one and kind of, oops, follow you. Problems guard, no image. Oh, because we did. So you can do all of it, but you need, say if you have, you're clicking on frame one and you do control U, you're gonna get that. But if you're clicking on four, frame four and have the entire one, you won't get it. So it just wants one to kind of render it. And we're just gonna mess around with it. maybe flamey. Not bad, not bad. Maybe a bit darker starting the red but you get the point it's you can do some cool things with that so let's go ahead and see what else we can add to this animation itself this one's kind of cool it almost looks like poison which could be something interesting as well but anyways let's let's see what i think fire is a safe bet kind of fits them right now let's tinker with it a bit more and see what we can do one thing i was thinking behind the head maybe we take that fire that fiery color and we'll just take this yellow right here and let's see if we can maybe do something like kind of a burning skull that might be cool so i'm just gonna inside this kind of area in his head i'm just gonna add some vfx or fire vfx that will be more noticeable in the idol so maybe i'll do the idol if you guys are interested part two idols we can just tackle this whole boss which would be fun the flame kind of comes this way. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the flame all over the place. And then we can kind of get a better idea of what's happening. Maybe we want it over the head. Don't want it in this thing. We want it behind that thing, sorry. We'll just keep filling it in and kind of add flames coming up here and there. And the flicker is kind of cool, actually. But let's go ahead and start this really because we kind of just filled in the bottom and now we're going to fill in the kind of flames which are going to be hard to notice at times when his head is kind of engulfed in the effects of the sword but we'll keep adding flames throughout this and i kind of like the kind of flicker it does twice at the end there kind of like he's like burning out because he just used all that energy and cool so let's take this orange too maybe add it in places of the all this flame head then add that throughout our animation and it would look a lot more noticeable in the idol but i think this is pretty cool i'm really digging that animation let's finishing touches for social media let's go ahead and duplicate all these layers and then find oops what happened that's a copy paste now there's double of everything and so there's three vfx let's go ahead let's do this copy paste so we want three VFX. So these ones we can flatten and we're gonna flip it. I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom here. Then I'm gonna just change the opac, whatever. Change it to hard light if you want and see where we're at. And that just gives quite a bit to this badass. All right, so it took us an hour and three minutes, but I think we got a really cool looking boss. There's still probably a few areas we need to tweak and clean up, but I think right now it looks really cool. If you guys want to see more of this dude, comment below if it's on YouTube or on Patreon. Just comment and we can tackle the idol and kind of moves and we could potentially just go through this character. He's a really cool character. Anyways, see you next time.